Let's solve some trigonometric equations on the interval between 0 and 2 pi, not including 2 pi. And we're going to look at some uncommon values. For example, let's say that the sine of theta equals 0 0.7. 0 0.7 is not one of our common y coordinates on a unit circle. So what we need to do is something different than just going to a unit circle. So if I want to get theta by itself, I need to undo the sine. Undoing the sine involves its inverse. So I'm going to take the inverse sine of both sides. So that they undo each other, leaving me with theta. Okay, keeping in mind that the domain of the inverse sine is between negative 1 and 1. 0.7 is certainly between negative 1 and 1. So this is a value that's not undefined. So here is an answer. And I say an answer because there's actually two answers. Keeping in mind sine function, where the y coordinate is 0.7. I'm just kind of giving you an approximation here. Would take place in the first quadrant or the second quadrant. Since we did an inverse sine, inverse sine is in the first and fourth quadrants. So this angle that we just found is, let's call it theta 1. Okay, so this angle is theta 1. So what I need to do now is find what that other angle is. So I need to find what is theta 2. Okay, so looking at theta 1, you can see that that's the leftover part between theta 2 and pi. So if I want to find theta 2, I would take pi minus that little piece. So in other words, pi minus theta 1. So theta 2 is pi minus the inverse sine of 0.7. Let's look at another one. Let's say the cosine of theta is negative 3 fourths. Okay, negative 3 fourths is not one of our common x coordinates on the unit circle. So the first thing I want to do is get theta by itself by taking the inverse cosine of both sides. Keeping in mind that the inverse cosine domain is between negative 1 and 1, negative 3 fourths is okay, so this is an answer. It's one answer. Because if we take a look at how the cosine function works, again, we're talking about an x coordinate of negative 3 fourths. I'm, again, I'm just kind of approximating just to give you an idea of where we are. That's going to be in the second and the third quadrant. When we do an inverse cosine, that's only looking at the first and second quadrants. So the angle that I have now is theta 1. So to find that second angle, I'm going to call that theta 2. I need to figure out what is that little bitty piece past pi. Because those are going to match up. Well, if I want to figure out that little piece, I'm going to take pi minus theta 1. Okay, so that means that other little bitty piece is also pi minus theta 1. So to figure out what theta 2 is, first of all, it's just the entire top part there, so that's just pi. And then plus this little bitty piece, pi minus theta 1. In other words, 2 pi minus theta 1. Okay, and then theta 1 with the inverse cosine. Okay, that's one way to do it. Uh, let me show you a second way that you could have looked at that. So theta 1 in the top part of that could also be viewed in the bottom part. This is also theta 1. It's negative theta 1. So if I want to find what 
theta 2 was, I could have done 2 pi minus theta 1. Okay, just a side note.